Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new game which just uh, entered, I guess, the stream, there's like the stream developer festival type deal that starts today. Not sure what time, I really don't know anything about it, but basically it's a, a festival from Steam that allows uh, developers to post like demos of their games for a limited period of time and um, I think certain developers get highlighted or other things like that. And so it's it's an interesting opportunity for developers. And one of the games that's going up on there that you can download the demo, I believe, for free is called Until the Last Plane. Uh, it is a game developed by Carlock Games, which I believe is an individual uh, or, or one or two man shop. I think one guy did the art uh, and then the, the one other guy did like everything else. And uh, it is a air base management game in World War II. Uh, so that's what we know about it here. This is going to be my very first impression or my first look at the game. Uh, so let's jump right in and take a look. This is a beta version of the game and it is a demo. So this isn't a full game. There's a tutorial which I, I haven't looked at. There's a campaign option and there's some game options. So if we go right into the campaign, we can see it looks like there's going to be three different campaigns in this game. The USSR and German campaigns are currently not something that you can play, but you can play the US campaign. So we'll jump into the US campaign, and we'll see within the US campaign there are three separate sub-campaigns all available for us to play. Now, I don't know if the, uh, if the campaigns are linked. Like, I don't know if you succeed in one, if you move to the next, or if they're, you know, sort of in their own... In their own um, uh, world. Uh, the Tunis campaign, which is sort of North Africa, is a easy campaign. You can see there's going to be a campaign in Italy, which will be medium, and a Normandy campaign, which will be hard. Um, so you can see the progression of the U.S. side. I would imagine Germany will have, you know, campaigns throughout their, their theaters of war, probably focusing in on, like, you know, maybe Barbarossa or the invasion of France or, or whatnot. Um, but w the only one we can play right now is Tunisia. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We are going to, you can see down here in the lower left, we have an option to pick a squad or an em emblem. No emblem, no perks or penalties or anything like that. If we go with uh, a tiger, we can go with an accuracy bonus for our group, but we lose a little bit of maneuverability. If we go with a boar as our squadron emblem, we lose a little bit of accuracy, but we gain durability. And if we go with a bat, we get accuracy and lose durability. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to go with, um, let's go with accuracy and lose a little bit of durability. So we're going to be the Bat Squadron. Uh, you can see here our plane power is up here with these stars, technicians, and resources available to us. And we're going to go ahead and play the Tunis campaign. I had already kind of started it and, and, you know, jumped around to just get a couple of the basics uh, under my, under, under my, my feet so I knew what I was doing. So you can see here, Tunis, 1943. It is an easy campaign. We start with 2,000 gold. The High Command has entrusted you with the management of Gasfa Airport. Your mission is to support the land troops that need to advance to Tunis. During the first day, you should run reconnaissance to discover strategic enemy targets. Victory. Win at least one mission a day. Defeat. Lose all your pilots. Funds assigned, $2,000. You can see our squadron apparently is made of P-36s, which I don't know if any of those actually deployed to North Africa or not. It's a pretty obsolete plane by this period of time. Um, I think it's the P-36 Mohawk, which uh, does not have very much firepower. Um, but it was relatively maneuverable, as we've seen in my War in the Pacific game, where they do feature a fair bit in the early part of the war. Not as late as 43, though, I don't think. So you can see here, this is sort of where everything is going to play out. This is our airfield that we're in charge of uh, managing. You've got, uh, uh, I guess this is a taxi strip. You've got a runway over here. Uh, you've got two bays here where aircraft can move in and get repaired or get refueled or rearmed. Nothing really to click on any of these things here. There is sort of this uh, loudspeaker which will give you updates about the day or the missions as they're un unfolding. Um, there are three tents here which are kind of important for how the game plays. There is a uh, headquarters where you can purchase different perks. This is kind of your tech tree for your, for your squadron to develop more advanced capabilities. We can't do anything with it yet, but once we do complete a successful mission, we'll get a skill point. You get one skill point for every mission, and you can use that to unlock things like Falcon Eye, which increases the accuracy of your pilots, uh, or metal work, metal work, which improves the durability of uh, your pilot's planes. 
So basically sort of a, a standard unlockable tech tree there. You've got this next one down here, which is the warehouse. This is where you buy things. So currently our airfield has 100 spare parts, 10 fuel, 10 ammunition. You need the spare parts to do repairs or to build new replacement items like new engines, new wings, new radiators, those kind of items that your aircraft need to operate properly. Uh, and your your technicians or your um, yeah your your airfield technicians or engineers uh, will will do the work for you. But you have to replenish your stock of spare parts uh, every once in a while. You start with a hundred, and uh, you can see here the cost for more items is on the right, uh, while the amount of items for that price is on the left. Last, uh, last tent here is our workshop. So if we click on that, this is where you do things. We can buy a new workbench, which I'm assuming makes us build things more quickly. But you can see the workbench here. If we go in here to craft, uh, we can craft different components. So for example, right now we have uh, a we have one uh, set of new machine guns I'm assuming or one set of new weapons currently in stock uh, we have th uh, one engine in stock we have one propeller in stock one radiator in stock a wing a fuel tank a tail a cockpit all of these items currently are what we have in stock in our sort of workshop if we wanted to make a new one we could click on a radiator here and tell our technicians to you know use spare parts they would use 10 spare parts to make a new radiator and these items need to be replaced as your aircraft take damage and these items are damaged on your aircraft we don't have any reason to do that right now we've got one of everything but a lot of times it does make sense to spend a little bit of time during the day to build some surplus stock because if you have two aircraft that get damaged and you only have one radiator and you need two in each then all of a sudden that aircraft may be grounded until you can wait to to have a new one made and it does take a little bit of time it's going to take a, a big chunk of the day to build new new aircraft I think the rest of this is all kind of flavor text. Uh, you've got like a, a abandoned plane down here. It says one of these days we should uh, dismantle it, but it's just kind of sitting down there. So this is uh, this is the main information. The last place over here is the hangar uh, where you have a list of all your aircraft. So our squadron consists of six P-36s. You can see all the different pilots. I wish we had a little bit of information we could learn about the pilots. It doesn't really tell me anything. I guess if I hover over the P-36, you can see W. Roberts is a rookie pilot with 49 accuracy, 54 resistance, and 31 will. It doesn't say if he has any, uh, like, kills or anything like that. We'll have to take a look at that. You can see here the fighter aircraft has its own stats below it, the P-36. And you can see its uh, attack moves is a normal attack, dive attack, and attack from below. Its defensive moves is a dodge, split eight, or split S, and barrel roll. We also have an F-5E uh, piloted by F. Scott, uh, which is our reconnaissance aircraft. So he has 83 will, 69 resistance, and 59 accuracy. His aircraft carries a lot of fuel uh, and a good amount of durability. This is basically a scout version of the P-38, I believe, uh, which we can use to do some reconnaissance. We can also recruit new aircraft. So we do have 2,000 2, money. We could use it to recruit some new pilots or new new aircraft here. So, for example, we have... Are these guys the same? Fire resistance, ammo capacity? Oh, those are the same stats. But we could get more P-36s, which are only 500 gold, or we could get a P-40, which is 550. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to spend a quarter of my money, basically, to get a P-40 to come and join our crew. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and do a reconnaissance flight. Uh, send our P-30, our F-5E, I guess, out and uh, and see what reconnaissance information it can bring back. I may have just wasted half the first day. It's already 4 o'clock uh, trying to tell you all of those things because this game does take place in real time. So we may fail our mission on our first day because I failed to uh, to actually get any any aircraft out. But essentially we have to accomplish one successful mission today. Our new pilot has arrived. You can see the P-40 just landed on the runway and it's taxiing to the hangars. And our reconnaissance aircraft just picked up one mission, it looks like. One target found. So we'll do a new mission right away. You can see here the mission is to kill at least one enemy aircraft and bomb at least one enemy target. The wind is strong, which will influence our ability to bomb effectively. High temperature. The suggested plane is an attack plane and the enemy appears to be Stukas, which is kind of amusing. We're going to send everybody out. We'll send the entire squadron, all six P-36s and one P-40, and we'll send them all out here to try and maximize our chances here. 
So you can see up here, we've got this sort of progress bar, which represents our uh, attack on the enemy base that's occurring. And you can see all of my aircraft are going up. Now we just got a pop-up here. We have 10 seconds to click on this bomb icon. So we'll go ahead and click on it. You can see we're flying over here. We now have to make a choice on how we want to bomb. We can bomb at low altitude, which gives the enemy a 75% chance of intercepting and damaging our aircraft. We can go at medium altitude, which is 50%, or we can go at high altitude, which is a lower chance of being intercepted, but sort of the crosshairs that move back and forth will move more quickly. We already have strong wind against us in this attack, so I'm going to stick at medium altitude. The wind and your altitude influence how hard it is to bomb. The way you bomb, and I'm going to tell you right now because I can't, you know, like if we wait till we get into the, the attack, it happens too quickly. But basically you get a crosshairs that you have to build over the target. So you get one reticle that moves right and left. The stronger the wind, the higher the altitude, the faster it moves. And you get one that moves up and down. Same story around the wind and the altitude. And what you want to do is you want to line the vertical and the horizontal uh, lines up so that they form sort of a, a point at the place you're trying to bomb. So let's go ahead and try that. So you can see there's the sideways reticle. We got one on the target. Oh, fuck. I missed. I double clicked. And you can see the 50% chance of being intercepted came up. Uh, the enemy Stuka, for whatever reason, is an interceptor and came up behind us and uh, damaged our aircraft. Our pilot, F. Nelson, did manage to get the, the plane back to base, uh, but he, he did take damage. So our engineers are now working on finding out what the problem is. Now we have two more aircraft, which can... Actually, three more aircraft are all lining up to bomb the target here, so you're going to get this same thing back and forth here. All right, so that did end up dropping. I, at the time that I clicked the button... Uh, it did line up over the target, and so we did we did bomb the target. So we got our one successful bombing target. But looks like we're going to get a couple here. You can see the enemy is moving in behind my attack aircraft and damaging them. You will see a lot of times in this game, it doesn't actually uh, destroy your aircraft when you when you take damage. So I guess that's a good thing. I think I missed. No, I did hit it. So you can see this 50% feels a little bit bullshit because they've intercepted me every single time. All right. So we've got... An, okay, so now we're going to dogfight. So this is a little bit different. This little icon represents dogfighting. It means we have an enemy in our tar in our crosshairs. So for some reason, again, the enemy is using Stukas. Bear with the game uh, as it's fighter aircraft and interceptors here. Uh, but they're basically the easy version of the enemy air force. So this is a dogfight. We've got an enemy aircraft in front of us, and we, our own aircraft is behind. Essentially, we need to line up behind the enemy aircraft to shoot it down. It needs to be inside our gun sights. That means we have to maneuver to try and get a kill. We have five maneuver tur turns left. The enemy has three. So essentially, I can do a normal attack, which just means I'm going to move straight forward. Uh, a dive attack, which means I move to the left. Or a attack from below, which will actually have me move off to the right. So it's basically left, right, and straight ahead. So we went left a little bit. He went straight ahead. We're going to go with a normal attack straight ahead. You can see he does it again as well. And he does a scissors here. So I have two more moves. I'm actually going to do a dive attack and move off to the left a little bit. Because the enemy, the Stuka, is more difficult in one regard. The 109, you can line up perfectly behind the enemy aircraft and shoot it down. And you're fine. The Stuka, if you line up directly behind the enemy aircraft, you will end up in range of its uh, tail gunner, and he will probably shoot you down as well. So we'll go ahead and do this. Oh, shit. My right wingtip might still be in range. Oh, no. He damaged me. So I shot him down, but then I also took damage myself. All right. So we're going we're gonna to do this dogfighting again. All right, so we are out of the range of his tail gunner, but we're still able to clip his left wing, and so we send him down to the ground. Meanwhile, I've got three aircraft all on the ground. I, I didn't meet the mission? All right, I'm going to jump back in because as I was explaining the, the base map and everything, the time is actually counting on, on the first day. So rather than, uh, rather than lose the first day because I wasted time uh, with uh, explaining everything on the map. I'm going to go ahead and just restart the campaign here. You can see it's 7.30 already. So we'll quickly do our reconnaissance flight, and then we'll we'll get going here. 
So we'll wait for the reconnaissance aircraft to go out. You can see it's currently on its mission. I'm not sure why it ended, though, the, the, the last battle. I mean, usually, even if it's nighttime, it'll let you finish your mission before the end of the day. It doesn't end the day with your aircraft out um, on a mission. That was weird. I don't. Maybe I failed the mission because, well, I don't know. I didn't lose all my aircraft, so I'm not sure. But in any event, we'll start over. So you can see we've got new missions because our reconnaissance is complete. I'm going to wait for the P-40 to taxi to get back to the hangar so I can include it in the mission. You have to wait for him to get back to the hangar. And so now we have two mission options. We have to shoot down three enemy fighters. These are BF-109s, I believe. Or we have to destroy an enemy base and shoot down uh, some enemy aircraft as well. We're going to do that one. Uh, we're going to assign our entire group of uh, pilots to the mission. We'll get them all up, and we'll, uh, we should be able to succeed here. You know, honestly, including all seven aircraft is probably a little bit of overkill. We probably don't need to do that. We might actually be better off just having, like, three or four aircraft, and then because your, your aircraft do take fatigue and, and damage throughout the day, so you, you can kind of get your, your crew exhausted. All right, so we destroyed the target, but we did take damage, so the enemy shot our aircraft down. Jeez, that's that's graphic. I'm burning! I wonder if your crew can get wounded. I know they can die, but I don't know if they can get wounded. All right, we've got another, another bombing raid underway. Looks like another enemy interceptor of us, so they sure like to shoot my aircraft down. Wow, this seems to be the theme of today, is that our aircrafts are just all on fire. You can see they're putting the fire out. Yes, sir. Ready to bomb. Okay. So the combat's a little bit simple, but it did, remember, this is the easy difficulty uh, uh, mission. Also, apparently all of my aircraft are are burning up anyway. This one did not get intercepted, so good for us there. So we've destroyed the base a bunch of times, but we need to shoot some enemy aircraft down, so it looks like we've got a dogfight opportunity now. I think I'm still going to clip his wing here. Yep, alright, so I just barely clipped his wing. That worked out perfectly. You can see it looks like we're trying to put out the fire. And you can also see four of, of ten of our technicians are currently available. So uh, six of our technicians are fighting that fire, which means that uh, it's, you know, they're, they're a little bit busy at the moment. This is a little bit silly lining up on the Stuka's sort of left wing every time to try and shoot it down. But you can see we've got a bunch of enemy aircraft in front of us now. Or we have had a bunch of enemy aircraft. I think I'm out of range. Yeah, I didn't damage him. I do like the art style in this game a lot. And I really like the, um, the, the, the target reticles as you get involved in combat. Looks like reloading an, an aircraft only takes one technician. Repairing an aircraft takes two. Yeah, I definitely did not need this many aircraft involved. We're going to get damaged again. Use up all my spare parts. 50% my ass. This is like 90% being intercepted. Yeah, I get it. You need to reload. All right, so the mission was accomplished. We bombed six enemy targets. We shot two enemy aircraft down. Two of our pilots were killed. Really? Who died? Shit, our P-40 crashed, apparently. So those guys who got shot down didn't come back to base. They actually died. All right, go out on another reconnaissance strike. Let's find more missions. We'll reload these aircraft while you do that. We'll get these aircraft ready for combat again. I may need to buy some... Do I need more spare parts, or... Looks like I've still got all of these items, one in stock, so we haven't had to have, use up any of our... Uh, our spare parts.
So I guess that's good at least. Meanwhile, we detected one target. It is 1,400 hours. So we'll see how worn out our crew is. I think I do want to go ahead and recruit. We're going to buy two more P-40s since we lost the first one. They may not come in in time to participate in any missions today, but I do want to make sure I have them for tomorrow's mission. All right, so new missions here. It's 1,500 hours. We should get underway. We have the option to bomb uh, enemy factory where we have to hit two factories. We have the option to shoot down enemy aircraft, or we can do the attack the base option again, which is what we just did. Um, let's bomb the factory. I have to spend $250 to repair this aircraft. Otherwise, its next mission will be its last. So we'll do that. And we'll send all five P-36s out. You can see our crew members have started to take fatigue and stress throughout the course of the day. So they are taking some, uh, some damage, if you will. Meanwhile, the new P-40 pilot, which just arrived, won't be able to participate in this, uh, in this mission. So it's just going to be the P-36s. I pretty much never buy new P-36s, so eventually I imagine the squadron will get attrited, so they're always going to be P-40s. And and I say I pretty much never do it in the sense that I've played a couple of a couple of days in the game, so um, <laughs> I can't say I have a huge uh, wealth of experience to draw on. This is still very much a first impressions type video. So if you see the Messerschmitt coming up behind us, shoots down uh, this aircraft of ours again, but we did... We did get a bomb on target. Meanwhile, the aircraft that was just shot down is coming in. He's a problem with his aircraft. He's not sure what. He got shot up pretty bad. Another bombing strike here. We've already succeeded, by the way. That's not even a factory. That's an airfield. So those new aircraft are coming in with new pilots to replace the casualties that we lost. Okay, so now the enemy is behind us. So you can see an enemy 109 is behind our P-36. We have three moves. They have three moves. Um, we don't have more maneuverability than them, so we don't get to move a ton of times. We have a couple of options. We can do a split S, a barrel roll, or a dodge. A split S is basically just moving back and to the right. Uh, a dodge is basically just moving forward. I'm not really sure what uh, that was about. And then a barrel roll, I think, is it moves left. I'm actually going to move back into the right, hoping that he can't get behind me. He did, and he damaged my, my aircraft and shot me down. Good news for us is the pilot wasn't killed. It looks like he brought his aircraft back. He just suffered some damage that we need to identify. We've got another dogfight occurring here. So we have, our, we have our technicians trying to figure out what to do. Meanwhile, this guy has a Stuka behind him, so... Yeah, the barrel roll is left. Oh, shit. God damn it, I got myself shot to pieces again. In my experience, the Stuka, it's always best to just do the split S and move back to the right. Alright, so we got another one. No enemy uh, intercepted us there. Did we lose another pilot? No. This guy who we just had damaged just landed. Alright, so... Looks like we're repairing... River aircraft. P. Turner is dead. Morale minus 10. T. Green will not be coming back. 17 spare parts being used up there. You can see obviously our uh, our space on the on the ground is pretty much all used up. But I'll keep. I don't know if like destroying more than the minimum uh, is is a necessary thing or not. You can see we bombed five bases. Uh, we didn't shoot anybody down, but it's still considered the, the mission accomplished. I think we had to destroy, what, two factories? So that gives us a plus 20 morale. Our morale is 100 now. And that's going to do it for the day here. So you can see uh, our option is to proceed to the next day. I'm actually going to finish our repairs before we do that. So we'll get our aircraft rearmed uh, and ready to, to go. I can't recruit any more pilots, though, because it's the end of the day. So you can see here we have three P... Well, actually, two P-40s. Our first P-40 pilot was killed. And then we have these other guys. Doesn't tell me if they get any, like, air-to-air -air kills. I'm not... I wish it kept track of that. 
Okay, so we've used 75 of our spare parts. We've also used a bunch of our fuel and ammo. So one of the other things I'm going to take the moment to do now rather than during the day is I'm going to buy more ammo, more fuel, and I'm going to buy more spare parts. We'll buy a thousand dollars worth of spare parts. Now, if I was doing this in the middle of the day, this would be much more challenging because you can see here it takes time for all of these items to be to be done. And that's time that, in theory, my, you know, I could be needing this stuff in the middle of a combat day. One of the nice things about the game is at the end of the day, you can do this stuff and the clock keeps going, but the day's over, so I don't have to manage, you know, 20 things at once. We did have two successful missions here, which are represented by two medals up here. Those two successful missions did give us uh, two skill points, which we can use. So I can go to... Uh, purchase the perk Falcon Eye, which increases the accuracy of all my pilot's gunnery, or and then it moves down the tree here. So you can see strong arm and condor diving te techniques are next. Those both require two points. I don't have two points. I only have one. So I could use my one remaining one to increase the durability of my aircraft uh, or allow my technicians to work more quickly. I think in this case, uh, we will just save the point for tomorrow and see what comes of it. So um, we're still doing the spare parts here. If we go to the craft, let's take a look. Did we use any of our spare parts up or was it, or do we use any of our actual components up or was it all just spare parts replacing random spare parts? Looks like it was all replacing random spare parts. So I don't need to, yeah, I think we'll, we'll wait on, on building anything new in our workshop for now. Uh, I can't end the day either. We do have to wait for this spare part purchase to be completed. Um, and wait for this ticker to kind of to kind of move on. Uh, the game doesn't let you end a day uh, while you're while you're waiting on this stuff. We also have twenty four hundred dollars for tomorrow, so we can use that on purchasing more items or getting more aircraft or other things like that. So now we have one hundred twenty five spare parts, and we'll go ahead and end the day. So you can see this is what happens when a day ends in the game. We move on to day number two. You can see the road to Tunis must be cleared. Today's mission will all have enemy armored vehicles as their targets. Destroy as many as you can. So our mission of the day is tank escort, uh, and we need to destroy enemy armored vehicles uh, in, in the day, presumably in, like, bombing strikes. Okay, so we'll move into the next day. But one of the other things that you see sometimes in this game is you get random events that occur between days. For example, the head of a nearby village has showed up at the camp and he said he's glad the allies have finally landed and he's bringing gifts and fruit grown by his farmers and he wants to give us the gifts to our, farm, to our, to our pilots. So we can choose to accept the gift or not. Sometimes if you accept a gift, it might have positive consequences, might have negative consequences. Uh, if you decline the gifts, it just kind of ignores the event, I believe. So we'll go ahead and accept the gifts and see what happens. You accept the gifts and the chief of the village seems very happy. Unfortunately, your men get a stomach ache after they eat the fruit. Minus 10 morale. So, um, maybe we shouldn't have accepted. The famous pinup pin Betty Grable has come to surprise the squadron. She performed a little show for all the pilots and mechanics. Plus 20 morale. All right, so uh, upset stomachs, but the pilots are still netting out positive there. Okay, so we don't run recon today uh, because it basically is just we already know what our recon is. Our missions are uh, to bomb enemy, enemy vehicles. Uh, we have 10 aircraft to do that. I think that's more than enough, so I'm going to go ahead and start a mission. You can see tank escort minimum objective is to destroy two enemy, uh, to kill two enemy tanks. Wind is medium, temperature is high, and the enemy Stukas are going to be out and about. So you can see some of our aircraft are basically, these planes are, have taken heavy damage, and its next mission will be its last. So I could send it on the mission, but then the aircraft would be destroyed. Or I can repair the aircraft by spending 250 gold, and now the aircraft will have a longer life. I'm going to send my P-40s up on this mission. I'm also going to send my P-36 pilots who have no fatigue or stress. I'm going to let Q. Lewis, C. Ward, and T. Walker rest their fatigue and stress. So we're just going to send four aircraft up in this first mission of the day. While they're up, I'm going to go to the workshop here, and we're going to try crafting some stuff. So you can see here, we have one item in stock of everything. I'm actually going to go ahead and spend some of our spare parts uh, to build a new radiator. That'll take 30 seconds. Um, it looks like we're already in a dogfight situation. The Stuk is behind us. So I'm going to try and scissors out behind him. All 
All right, so we were able to get far enough ahead that I think, yep, we got away. So he did not hit us. We were far enough ahead of his guns that his convergence must have been off and he couldn't hit us from that range. Meanwhile, now we're going to be behind an enemy aircraft, and so we can go ahead and we can try and shoot down this Stuka. Okay, so I think I clipped the wing. I did. And you can see the P-40s didn't take any damage from the enemy tail gunner. We're going to shoot down another enemy aircraft. And obviously, like, the traits of these aircraft, how much they can move, how far they can turn, those kind of things are all determined by the aircraft's uh, different ratings. So, you know, P-36s are more maneuverable, but, but slower and less durable than the P-40, for example. And we showed those stat lines earlier. All right, so all I had to do in this mission apparently is destroy two enemy aircraft. I thought it was going to be a bombing raid, but apparently it's not. Oh, no. I'm going to get clipped by his tail gunner. It's amazing how accurate these tail gunners are. It's like, it's a little bit silly, but whatever. All right, my pilot is in a plane that's burning up. And you can see three of our technicians are racing out there to put the fire out. That leaves us seven out of ten mechanics available still on the ground for other things. The airbase is not very busy right now, though, so... Got him! And he didn't get me. Good on you, P-40s. And by the way, when we're, when we're crafting things in our workshop, that technically is... Oh, shit. I think I missed. Ah. That would also use mechanics. So if I go back into the workshop here, you can see we built a second radiator. If I want to build another a replacement propeller, it uses 20 spare parts, and there's going to be one technician working on that. You can increase the number of technicians working on it or mechanics working on it, uh, but that does end up costing, uh, costing you more mechanics that can't be doing other things. So... All right, and you can see we are using up the fuel and the ammo that we purchased, so we've used up one more fuel. So that's, again, why you have to purchase those things at the end of a day. So now that we did that, we've used up another fuel item. All right, so this is my little trick with the Stuka. Just keep doing split S's. Because the P-36 is more maneuverable, you're going to have more moves than the enemy, and you're always going to get in behind them, basically. Meanwhile, successful mission, we shot down four enemy aircraft. One of our pilots was apparently promoted, and we gained 1,300 funds and 20 morale. G. Ross has been promoted to average. Okay. So we're going to do another mission. It's going to be the same mission, actually. So let's wait a second for our, our pilots to get their aircraft back to the hangar. And then we'll see who's ready to get, get sent out on, a, on an afternoon strike. You know what, we don't need, let's just let's just send what we've got now. We'll wait, that P-40 can. So the the crews that we didn't send out earlier, it looks like they are they might be a little bit less fatigued. I'm not 100% sure. You can see the crews we sent out in the first mission. This guy, Campbell, is very stressed. So we're not going to send him out. We'll send Ross, who's a little bit tired out. We'll send Alan, Lewis, Price, and then Ward has no fatigue. We'll leave Walker on the ground, and then maybe we'll get a third mission, and I'm not sure. We're up to two skill points now. So I'm also going to go ahead and um, all pilots control the plane better by reducing the penalty when there's wind. Resistance for all pilots. They'll be less fatigued during the fight. We'll do strong arm. All right, so the enemy is in front of us. I should be out of range of his tail gun. So I shot one enemy aircraft down. Meanwhile, you can see another Stuka's behind me. Obviously, this is pretty easy right now in terms of our ability to, to win some of these battles. There's some systems that you can kind of figure out, some traits, some, some patterns you can use to, to do well. But it's relatively easy at the moment, and I think part of that is also, one, we're in the Tunis campaign, which is basically like the tutorial. Um, but then also... Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think that's, I guess that's the main thing. It's just the fact that we're in the, 
we're in the Tunis campaign, which is admittedly is easy. It, it says right on the face of it, it's easy. So, it does get a little bit repetitive on some of these fights. I'm going to get damaged here, aren't I? Yeah. Fudge! Dude, if your aircraft is on fire and you're flying back from an engagement while you're burning up, you're dead. You are toast. Am I in range? The convergences aren't perfect, so sometimes when the enemy's just barely beyond yours, you can still hit them. But we've already succeeded on this mission, so... Honestly, at this point, I'd rather just end the mission and then let me fight another one before, you know... I don't, I don't know that killing a bunch of extra enemy aircraft helps you that much. Really would like to, to dogfight an enemy fighter here. So our ammo's down to seven. You can see half our mechanics are being used. I'm surprised that a fighter that is on fire doesn't result in like equipment that or spare parts that need to be used. Go, 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 I like how they land and they just instantly go out. They're like, nope, we we need to we need to send another one out. All right, let's see if this split S will work. Yeah, we're gonna get. I'd love to just be able to like drop in behind him and shoot at him, but whatever. We evaded him. That's what matters. I'm very tired, sir. Can I come back to base? I guess. I I did have one crew member who was tired, and I didn't let him come back to base, and he crashed because he was so tired. So, all right, we shot down four enemy aircraft, plus twenty morale. Second successful mission, second medal up here. We might have time to get one more mission in. If we try another one right now. I've only got three planes to choose from. I need like. 20 more minutes to get some of these other aircraft back to the hangars. I'm going to wait. Well, good thing that aircraft didn't need anything done. Alright, I don't want to wait longer. So we're going to send Campbell up. He's not fatigued at all, although he is stressed. We'll send Alan up, who's pretty fatigued. We'll send Price up, who's fatigued and a little bit stressed. And we'll send T. Walker, who's not fatigued or stressed. C. Ward is incredibly stressed. You start getting penalties, by the way, when your crew gets into the... Actually, I'll just send this guy up, too. If he's too tired, he'll tell me, and he'll come back to base. He's not yellow or anything like that, so... All right, so it's getting into the evening. It's 5.30, but I'm hoping we can get one more successful mission under our belt for three successful missions on the day. Just like that, we're already behind an enemy aircraft. The P-40 has such has much better range on its guns than the uh, than the P-36. The only reason the P-36 seems to do so poorly against the Stuka is that it has to be in so close because it's just not a very um, it's the range on its guns is not very good. Whereas the P-40 has very good range on its guns, and the P-40 can hit the enemy the enemy fighter from beyond the range of the enemy fighter's tail gunner's range, whereas the P-36 can't. I'm assuming the game will have a bunch of additional aircraft um, in, the, in the final version of the game. Oh, no. I think I just clipped. Yeah. The, the good thing is, in today's today's battle, the damage we have taken hasn't cost us any of our crew members' lives yet. I did it again! God, the P-36 sucks. I wonder if you can have your crew members wounded. Twelve 
I think I clipped him here. Well off to the left. We have a tiny fragment of his wing that just got damaged. That's good enough. Six you can see here the P-40, on the other hand, is disastrously not maneuverable. But it's fast enough to stay far enough out ahead of the Stuka so that it doesn't, uh, doesn't get shot down as easily. So you can see here again, we were able to stay out of range. I'm really curious to see how the other aircraft are modeled. I really like the art style in this game. Um, you know, it's, it's a relatively simple game and, and easy to sort of get the hang of it. Uh, I want to know what additional challenges they're going to add to the game uh, in the other campaigns. Uh, I, I hope they add the ability to have multiple missions going on at the same time because right now, frankly, I've just got too many mechanics. Uh, the, the biggest bottleneck is not having enough um, enough uh, sort of, I don't know, a taxi area or areas to actually have the aircraft, uh, you know, repaired. But there's never really any a dilemma on how I'm going to use my mechanics because I, I can't... It, here's If I had multiple missions going on at the same time, I think it would add to the complexity of managing your resources, managing your aircraft, managing your stress, your fatigue. Um, you know, those more complex campaigns, I really hope they, they truly are more complex. Meanwhile, you can see we succeeded on our third mission of the day. We've got three medals here. Yes, sir. Am I out of fuel yet? I'm down to three fuel or five fuel and three ammo. We have, uh, I think we have four skill, or two skill points now. So we're going to save up to be an expert diver. Well, I can't do, you can only do one in each tier. So we've already done expert diver and strong arm, which means we have two skill points left for the engineering tier. So we'll go with increased durability. We'll have one point left over for tomorrow. I'm also going to go ahead and buy more fuel uh, and ammo. I didn't really use very many spare parts today, but we'll buy 50 more just in case. The main ones I used was in uh, getting more spare parts. So that second radiator that we built, that second prop that we built. We did use up one of the cockpit spare parts, so we probably should build um, a cockpit. You can see here, by the way, we can, we can increase the number of mechanics working on this. So if I put five mechanics working on this cockpit, it's only going to take 30 seconds, which I guess in, if I was doing these repairs in the middle of the day, that would mean a lot more because that time would be more valuable as opposed to waiting till the end of the day to build the new, the new part, in which case it doesn't matter because there's no, no time constraint at the moment. All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. We'll pick this up with a part two to conclude the Tunisian campaign in this uh, upcoming game, Until the Last Plane. It is available in the Steam uh, Autumn Festival as a demo uh, where you can play the Tunis campaign just like I am here today. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think about this game? Does this look intriguing or not? Uh, and I'll catch you guys next time. Until next time, though, I'm out.